Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I just got back from the doctor. In fact, they took my blood today, not because there's anything wrong, but because I was going to do the annual checkup thing and I do not like having my blood taken, um, not at all, but they took my blood today and um, I'm going to, of course I'll find out the results of all that down the road, but everything checked out, everything's cool. But I'm at that age where you have to do this thing annually at least or every six months. So everything's good to go. Um, XRP Crypto Wolf RippleNet offers connections to hundreds of financial institutions around the world via a single API and makes moving money faster, cheaper, and more reliable. It also helps reduce even eliminate the need to pre-fund accounts with on-demand liquidity. This was Ripple had tweeted this out. This is an old. I mean, this is actually I think a, a link to their website. Um, they're just kind of I've noticed they're like retweeting you know older things every once in a while. But that's okay. We cover them when we see them. And then XRP Crypto Wolf also sent me this. Bitcoin futures market exceeds two trillion in monthly volume for January. January's Bitcoin futures volume was $2.09 trillion, which is an all-time high, and monthly Bitcoin options volume reached its highest point in January, coming in at $27.93 billion. So you can see this, this market is really taking off. This is interesting. Visa just announced it, it's now working on allowing customers to buy and sell Bitcoin through their own banks. And then this guy says, in retrospect, it was inevitable. I think that he's, that's something that Elon Musk said the other day. He may be taking that from him. But this was from Anchorage, um, who became a crypto bank the other day, if you remember. Um, proud to be working with Visa to enable banks and fintechs like um this one, let me see what this is. First Boulevard, I guess this is a digital bank, to easily and securely bring crypto services to their customers. That's big time. That means Visa is right there in the game, folks. All right, this is big too. Uphold tweeted this out today. Very soon, our European customers will be able to receive part or all of their salary in Bitcoin or any asset of their choice and spend it using uphold cards issued through optimus that is pretty cool imagine that people getting paid in bitcoin or in a crypto of their choice that is exciting riz xrp sent me this um janet yellen is going to name david lipton the former imf mom i'm not sure what that to to official um as a, an advisor to the Treasury per Reuters. And then this is David Lipton, a tweet he had done a while back. Will crypto assets reduce demand for central bank money? I found the IMF analysis in the latest issue of Finance Development Magazine quite compelling. Then here's another thing on him. Before coming to the fund, Mr. Lipton was a special assistant to the president and um, served as senior director for e International Economic Affairs for the National Economic Council. Anyway, bottom line is this guy is decorated government veteran. He was in the Clinton administration um, at the Treasury Department. So this guy is uh, has been around. Now, this is an interesting video of David Lipton from macro trader formerly cryptopolis x okay so used to be cryptopolis but he had put this out back in october of 2019. big tech's promise is to make payments and financial services as easy and as cheap as sending a text or a picture this could potentially change and reshape the financial sector's landscape for the future However, as they grow and become a systemic part of the financial system, things become a bit more complex than sending a text or a picture. Finance, after all, is the most regulated industry in the world, and for good money, for good reason. It's about money, 
and it's systemically important. More specifically, it's about all the money. Okay, every time I see something about the IMF, I like to, I'm reminded of Jess Ching, Ching, who's the um, senior counsel at the Federal Reserve Board, former Ripple, um, and also former IMF. She's now senior counsel at Federal Reserve. Before that, she was counsel at the IMF. Before that, deputy general counsel at Ripple. And before that, Federal Reserve Bank of New York. You can't make this stuff up. Now, James Rule uh, uncovered something interesting. He apparently saw where this guy, Fred Wagner, I don't know, I don't know if the guy's become CFO of PolySun, but he, he, had, he showed some documents here where it looks like he, at a minimum, is, a, is now a shareholder. We knew about the others. I had seen their names before. I don't know if this is a new one or not, but I'm assuming that it is. Because you're not hearing anything else out of PolySign. Okay, M sent me this. This uh, M, this person that goes by M earlier this today, sent me something about quantum. And I don't know if you're noticing, but this quantum's popping up everywhere in articles left and right now. And so, to me, I'm fascinated by it because I believe I don't believe that you can create these new digital currencies around a new financial system unless you're making them quantum resistant. And so I'm going to focus on that a little bit here. But this is an article where MasterCard MasterCard preps contactless technology for quantum era. They announced that it's applying quantum technologies to develop its next generation contactless contactless payment. So um, Ecos leverages new quantum resistant technology to deliver advanced algorithms and cryptographic key strength while keeping the contactless interaction under a half a second. So point is is that MasterCard knows that they can't have this they can't go into this new financial era unless what they're building is quantum resistant. Everybody knows it. That's why Bitcoin, I'm telling you, I see what I see coming down the line is somehow, and I'm wondering what happens if that happens. What if someone comes along with a quantum computer and they're able to mine Bitcoin with just the push of a button in seconds with a quantum computer? What happens then? And yeah, I know, I know. I'm crazy because I think that quantum computing is not 20 years out. Well, you can think I'm crazy, but wait till I show you what I'm about to show you because I don't think I am. First, I want to show you this. This guy put out this tweet, quantum resistant blockchains. The elliptical curve signature of Bitcoin could be be broken by a quantum computer by 2027 unless measures are taken. Algorand focuses on being quantum resistant, hiring world leader in post-quantum cryptography, Chris Pikert. Now, I don't think it's just Algorand, although I do find Algorand interesting. I think it's XRP, I think it's Stellar, and I think it's Flare. I don't think, I know they, they've got to be working on it because they've, they've hired someone that's a doctor of quantum computing. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. There is a one in seven chance that some fundamental public key crypto will be broken by quantum by 2026, and a one in two chance of the same by 2031. National Institute of Standards and Technology, U.S. Department of Commerce. This is a is a quote I took out of that. When will a large-scale quantum computer be built? And then this is a quote from this Dr. Michelle Mosca of the University of Waterloo. Okay, so my point is, is that you better believe they're working on this. They're working on making these, even if a quantum computer is a ways out, they're working on making sure these things are quantum resistant. And I put nice to know Flair's chief scientist has a PhD in quantum computing. Right, um, actually, here it is right here. This is the chief scientist for Flair. Um, now, this is where I got this right here. I just wanted to show, it's, look, right here. National Institute of Standards and Technology, U.S. Department of Commerce. It says the ship has sailed. The NIST post-quantum crypto competition. So they're saying this is already, we we are already preparing for this because they know it's coming. This, if you go down, right here it says, look at this, hold on a sec. Well, if I can get, 
the NIST has decided is the time to look into standardization. It says um, uh, quantum resistant quantum resistant algorithm in the not too distant future. All right, and then as you go along down here, this is the clip that I play or, or the clip that I had cut out. If I can find it and not go past it, maybe I did go past it. Um, no, I did go past it. Let me go back up. All right, let's do that slower. I just want to show you. I'm just wanting to show you. This isn't coming from me. This is coming from. This is a document from the Department of Commerce, and they're work. They're telling you they're working on this, and they're giving you dates as to when they're expecting this to to hap where where this could happen, and that's why they're getting prepared right here. Peak uh, pre post quantum computing standardization too early. There's been much debate whether it's too early to look into PQC standardization. When will a large scale quantum computer be built? And then they tell you right there, there's a one in seven chance that some fundamental public key crypto will be broken by quantum. You mean like proof of work by 2026? That's five years from now. That's not 20 years from now, folks. Our experience tells tells that we need at least several years to develop and deploy PQC standards. All right, moving along. And now, yeah, I know it's all, all this talk about quantum financial system, all that's all crazy talk too, except the only problem is what I'm about to show you. This is the Goldman Sachs CEO from, a, from Amazon Web Service. And remember, a Amazon Web Services, just yesterday, Jeff Bezos announced he's stepping down and the guy from Amazon Web Services is going to step into his place. And this is the Goldman Sachs CEO. This is from Amazon's AWS reInvent from 2019, not 2021. This is from back in 2019. Listen to what he says. Finance is the perfect place to take new technologies and have an immediate real-world impact. Our data scientists have been using AI and machine learning techniques for years. Years. And we're already pushing the research community to consider what's possible when you apply quantum power, quantum computing power, to financial problems. Yeah, so they've been, we know they've been looking at it, well, he said for years. So back in 2019, the Goldman Sachs CEO is talking about this. So the question is, what have they been doing for the 5 and 10 and 20 years before that if they knew it was going to be an issue? But if he's saying it on stage in 2019, just imagine. Okay, and this is the, just to show you, this is the actual conference, AWS reInvent 2019. Um, now, I showed you this in my last video, and I wanted to show you something interesting. Um, this was, um, I've, I've told you a lot of times on this channel, there are people that just have, over the last three years, that have popped up on social media, and they are, they're always using fake names and and they don't ever show themselves and then they they talk like they know something and then they disappear and you never hear from them again one of them was kendra hill and kendra hill is the one who i'm sure created a fake name and all that on steam it and had put this up basically coming out and saying that amazon holds a stake in five billion xrp that's what that's what supposedly she said okay and then um, this, and, and she also said that there's going to be, there's a deal that, that Amazon, I think she said AWS. Let me see if, if she said AWS or just Amazon. Maybe she just said Amazon. Okay. Anyway, um, Amazon. All right. So then this is Corey Johnson from January 5th, 2019. He was the Ripple spokesman at the time. He was at Cornell's Entrepreneurship Entrepreneurship Summit in New York City. He says, we can look at the $23 trillion that are laying around in Nostro and Bostro accounts that are sort of set up waiting for prepayment because money is slow. Amazon, probably the most capital efficient company in the history of the world, has a billion dollars laying around in, in accounts to pay employees somewhere or to pay a vendor somewhere because the system of moving money so slow. So I can analyze all that and figure out what that looks like. 
I can't imagine what a world looks like in 10 years when you can employ, employ that worker in Bangladesh here from the States or a Thai nanny can send money home from Japan to pay her family, to have her family uh, have a truly better standard of living. So anyway, he's, he's basically using Amazon there as an example. But I've often wondered, you know, wonder where the person could have come up with the name Kendra Hill if you're going to make a name up. Well, I just ran across something today that I just thought was funny slash interesting. Um, you, because you have, to, you have to wonder if someone that names themselves Kendra Hill, if they did, I mean, that, that it may be complete bull, okay? But what if it was someone who knew something? What if it was someone who actually worked at Amazon? What if they knew about Amazon Kendra, a highly accurate intelligent search sor service powered by machine learning. This is actually like a um, Amazon. It says Amazon Kendra is an intelligent search service pro uh, powered by machine learning. Kendra reimagines enterprise search for your websites and applications. Da da da. My my point is, you know, Kendra Hill could be completely nothing. Could have known nothing, but it's just interesting as we sit here in 2021. There are things that are happening and you just start scratching your head. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that Amazon has a program that they call Amazon Kendra. Thanks for listening.